Hello, everyone on tonight. We thank God for you joining us tonight for another wonderful Sunday School lesson. Amen. We thank God for those who are, are joining us on our Facebook, as well as joining us on Zoom on tonight. And we are in for a great lesson on tonight. Um, last week, uh, Pastor uh, talked to you about love your enemies, and on tonight, it is his turn to speak with the uh, young people uh, for their Zoom session, and so he's with them on tonight, so I will be with you until he joins me a little bit, bit later, and so we do. We thank God for you all joining us on tonight, and we are going to have a uh, word of prayer and um, we're gonna ask you just to bow your heads. And Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. And Lord, we thank you for strength. And Lord, we ask that you come in on tonight, Lord Jesus, and bless us in a mighty special way, Lord. Oh God, bless us. Continue to open up our understanding, Lord, so that we can continue to draw closer to you, so that we can also continue to know you even more through your word. And Lord, we just thank you for all of the blessings. Oh God, continue to bless those that are sick that are in a hospital. Oh God, right now, bless our own mother Stone and her husband, Deacon Stone. Bless them right now, oh God. Send the, your healing anointing right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you know what they stand in need of right now in the name of Jesus. Bless those who are joining us on today, then on Zoom and on Facebook. Oh God, bless them as well, Lord Jesus. Oh God, open up the doors right now. Heal, touch, and deliver, even save on tonight, Lord Jesus. Let someone eyes be open. Let someone's heart be open to your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. 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 So we thank God. Amen for you all. <clears throat> Again, joining us, those who have joined us on uh, Facebook. Amen. We thank God for you uh, as well. And um, just trying to get tonight, I have to kind of run both things on tonight, but we thank God, thank God for even Evangelist Johnson joining us on tonight. I see that he has joined us, and, and so we thank God for him as well as uh, Sister Jennings and Sister Chambliss, amen, and Elder Morrow, amen. We thank God those here on Zoom. I see uh, Mother Jean Kane and Sister Eileen Williams, and so we thank God for you um, and those who have joined us on Zoom. I don't know everyone's phone number, but I do thank you uh, for joining us on tonight. I would say those who are on Facebook right now, please share this uh, Sunday school lesson with someone. Um, this is a, a wonderful lesson about loving your neighbor. And when I uh, looked at that, that title, of course, the first thing, you know, I thought about was uh, Mr. Rogers uh, neighborhood where he would say, won't you be my neighbor? And um, how a lot of what he, you know, talked about with the children was about how to treat one another with kindness and with love. And so um, tonight we're about love your neighbor. And our Bible basis is found in Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 37. And um, our Bible truth says Jesus teaches the Good Samaritan parable, and an awesome, awesome parable um, about a Samaritan. And we'll get into that, um, how, um, how this is such a great lesson. Um, the memory verse says, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he, he said, he that showed mercy unto him. Then Jesus, uh, uh, then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. And that's Luke uh, 10, 36 and 37. And the lesson aim says by the end of this lesson, students will explore the concept of neighbor in the conversation between Jesus and the lawyer. Value all people as God does and share love and mercy with those who are in need, even those who are different from them. Um, isn't that something? Showing mercy, love, and mercy uh, from those in our need and even those who are different from us. 
uh, sometimes we can kind of have a problem uh, with that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. You know, if they don't look like us, if they didn't come from the same neighborhood as us, uh, we might have a problem uh, with uh, showing love, mercy, and kindness. The life theme for today's lesson is that self desires, self gratification, and self interest are highly valued in our time. How can we become better neighbors to one another? Jesus challenges us to address the needs and welfare of everyone, including perceived enemies. And in our Bible learning, it says Jesus encourages us to expand our definition of neighbor. And I wanna maybe stop right there. What, what do you think, if, if someone can tell me about, why do you think Jesus wants us to expand our definition of a neighbor? What's so important about that? A neighbor could be someone we might see every now and then, but why does he want us to ex expand our definition? And hello, Sister Rhonda Mitchum, Mother Wiley, amen, Sister Veronica Harmon, thank you for watching and joining us. Um, hit that share button. I love those hearts. Thank you, you can send more hearts. Hey, uh, Dylan. Thank you for watching us on today. So my, my question is, why does why do we need to expand our definition of a neighbor? Uh, are we kind enough? Are we merciful enough? Anyone have any thoughts on that? I think Sister Eileen, are you trying to say something? You might have to unmute yourself. And while she's trying to unmute us, um, thank God for Sister Elise Jones joining us on tonight. So, okay, yes, Sister Eileen. Okay. We're supposed to love everyone. And that's just not like our neighbor next door, but it's even the people we come in contact during the day at any time. And they're, they're called our neighbors also. So everyone is our neighbor. Okay. Very good, thank, thank you. So you so Sister Annie said everyone is her neighbor. It's not just the person next door. It's the people that uh, we just come in contact with every day. So maybe that's why we need to, exp uh, to uh, I guess, uh, expand our definition of neighbor because maybe we're thinking as long as we're okay with treating the person next door to us, okay, then we're, we're good, we're good. Um, I do thank God for uh, Mother Kane uh, joining us on tonight. And I'm glad that she did, um, that she joined us on tonight. But I, 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 I was, when I was reading this lesson, I was thinking about um, a time that Mother Kane and her daughter were traveling. And um, I would love if she would tell that story about the time that she was traveling. And then it was, um, I guess, what she may want to call a good Samaritan. Um, just to give an example, and I think it's a really good example for this story of Mother Kane. Can you hear me? God bless you, lady. Lady Ross, um, I'm glad I finally did get on. Um, yes, um, we were, my daughter and I, uh, Kathy, were coming from Terre Haute, traveling uh, about 70 miles an hour uh, down the uh, coming. We had got off of 465 and we were turning left to go. This is before they remodeled it right there at going 30, uh, 31. We were going to turn, we were turning. Uh, I was turning left to head north on 31, right there in Indy. And um, there was a gentleman that was on the right-hand side of me, of uh, and Kathy, and he said, um, he uh, was pointing rather to my car uh, on the passenger side. And I told Kathy, I said, is the door closed or something? And she said, yes. And so, uh, the end result was that uh, after I got um, turned left, 
And I, was, I wasn't even uh, at Westfield, those of us that are familiar with that Westfield area. Um, the tire just blew, uh, blew out on the passenger side. And um, the gentleman had already passed us up um, there on 31 North, but he saw when the tire blew out, he uh, backed up on the interstate on that side stream that sidebar there backed all the way up to where we were. He said, I saw the tire, you know, it was going low. And um, so at this point, um, I only, I had given just about every, my, my money that I had in the church. And I didn't, I don't think I had a, a debit card at the time. Uh, this was when Kathy had uh, tore her Achilles tendon. She had, uh, uh, cast all the way up to her shoulder, up to her hip. And so she was in the back and so a uh, back seat, but you know, we didn't get hurt or anything cause I just pulled over to the right hand lane. So the gentleman said, oh, he said, well, I'll, I'll put your spare tire on and uh, for you. And uh, in my uh, lack of judgment and wisdom, I didn't put, keep my spare tire in the trunk because I had her in the trunk. And so I had left the uh, tire at home. So he said, oh, so in, he said, oh, he said, well, I can take you up here and we can see about getting a tire. And um, I didn't know whether to leave Kathy or to take Kathy. And in result, we ended up uh, both going and we left the car there. Um, no problem as far as the police concerned, they didn't come, but this gentleman did, <laughs> and he, he was so nice, and he took us to one place, and uh, that was up the road there, and they didn't have the tire. At that time, I had a uh, Grand Marquis, and uh, the tire, you know, specific tire, they didn't have that tire, and the gentleman said, okay, well, I'll take you to another place, so he took us to another place. But let me tell you the goodness of God. Uh, we got in the car and I'm hesitating. You know, this gentleman was not uh, of the same uh, community that we used to. And he, he, we got in the car. I, Chris, uh, sat in the front because her leg had to be straight. I sat in the back and he was by himself. And so we got to talking. He said, he said, where are you coming from? I said, I'm, we're coming from Terre Haute. I said, we had, uh, we had um, a service down there and we on our, I'm on my way to South Bend. He said, oh, I just came from um, uh, a men's ministry conference. And I said, oh, you did? And I said, you know, he asked me my name and Kathy's name. And then he, I said, well, you have a car? And let me tell you, he gave me this car and it said, how big is your God? And the awesome of God, how he had this good Samaritan in our realm. And the end result, we ended up going to another place, getting, uh, they had to order the tire. They told us it wouldn't be ready until such and such a time. I'm trying to expedite this. It was just so awesome. But we, the men, the people at the second place said, we can get it, but you, it won't be back here until X amount of time. So he, they said, well, the man said, well, do you want to go someplace? He said, well, I'll just take you to my house. And I'm, I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> and okay, he lives like north of Westfield somewhere. He said, we went to his house and his wife was there. And we ended up having prayer in her house. She was saying, she said, this has to be God because my son was just getting ready to go through a divorce and I just was asking God to send on some help. And here he did send on some help. And so she gave us, I think, some pie and we sat there, <laughs> we prayed. And then the time came that he took us back to put the tire back on the car. And once he got the tire on the car, to God be the glory, then the policeman came. So God is good. <laughs> God is so good. He is just so good. He just made a way. And so many times I have to remind myself, how big is your God? 
to God be the glory. Thank you for letting me share that, Mother uh, Lady Ross. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for sharing, Mother. I appreciate that. Um, I, you know, I think about that story, you know, that Mother King tells often um, because I think uh, it goes along with this Bible learning about challenging us to continue to expand our definition of neighbor. And as Mother Kane was saying, that here is a man that didn't even know her, didn't know anything about her, who stopped to help, who wasn't from her community, her town, um, did not, you know, look like her. Um, but yet, because of the love of God, because he has such an expanded view of what neighbor is that, you know, he wanted to be a help. And here he is, he helped. And it, it not only helped himself, but it helped, you know, Mother Kay, and, and it, it helps us, you know, to know that story um, that she's telling. So thank you, Mother Kay, for sharing that. Um, I see that there are many comments here on Facebook. Uh, Mother, I mean, Missionary Marie Meadows is saying it's because anyone we come in contact with, we should consider a neighbor and treat us like be loving and kind. So everyone can be our neighbors. As I feel he wants us to love everyone like they are our neighbors. Um, so uh, Mother Jennings said, God is not a respecter of persons. John 3 and 16 says he loves the world and we are made in his image. Um, he desires that we do likewise. Um, so I do, I thank God for who have, those that have joined us on uh, Facebook on tonight. Thank God for Sister Simmons and Sister uh, Deborah Harrison uh, joining us, Sister uh, Sierra uh, joining us on Facebook on tonight. Amen. And so, yes, we're, we're talking about our neighbor. So we're going to go quickly here to the scriptures, um, which are found in Luke 10, 25 to 37. And I'm going to put that up on the screen uh, for everyone. And it says here, and a certain, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit, inherit eternal life. Um, and so here, in the, we see right here this particular verse that here's a lawyer um, who probably thought that he knew it all and that, you know, Jesus, like I say, he's calling him a master, but really I don't think he was really respecting him, you know, as, as a master teacher. He was just trying to see what he could do, you know, uh, to maybe trip him up. And he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And it said, and he answered and said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And it said, he said unto him, thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. And so Jesus was like, yeah, you're, you're right. You know, love. You know, love one another, love your neighbor with all your heart, soul, strength. And he says, but he justified himself, said unto Jesus, he said, and who is my neighbor? Like he didn't know who Jesus was. The all-knowing, <laughs> the all, you know, the wonderful Jesus that he is. Um, he said, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to, to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And here it is. And here's a priest that saw this man half dead and he passed on the other side a priest and, and um, in our lesson how it talked about uh the um the duties of the priest and um it, it was saying here that um you know the priests are descendants of aaron and it says and they are responsible for everything to do with temple worship yeah. and here he is <laughs> he's supposed to be worshiping God and we worship God by loving one another and, and sharing with one another and exhorting one another. That's also a, a form of, of worshiping God. And here he is uh, that he just passed by on the other side. And then 
Um, it says that likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. And it says the Levites were a tribe of descendants of Levi, but not of Aaron. Um, and they assisted the priest in the temple. So they were, I guess you got the priest and then you may have the assistant pastor, but they assisted uh, the priest. And yet here he is, he looked at this man who had been beaten, had been left for dead, and he passed by, on, looked at him and passed. And that's something, it'd be something if he just didn't recognize, but he went over, took the time and effort to look and pass by. It says, but a certain Samaritan, as he journey came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him into an inn and took care of him. Look at that, a Samaritan. And it says, and on the mile, when he... Excuse me. When he departed, he took out two pins and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more, then I come again and I will repay thee. And uh, looking at those scriptures, it says, and which of these now, three, thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And when he said, he that showed mercy on him, then Jesus said unto him, go and do thou likewise. And when I want to go back here, just backtrack a little bit about that, the Samaritan. And the Samaritans uh, were, um, I, I guess you want to say they were descendants of Jews, but they had intermingled with Gentiles and had adapted some of their uh, religious rituals that were non-Jewish rituals. And because of that, there was this great divide between the Samaritans and the, and the Jews. The Jews didn't like Samaritans and Samaritans did not like the Jews. But here it is, a man who had been beaten, a Jewish man who had been uh, beaten and left for dead. And here is a man, the most unlikely man came and helped out uh, this Jewish man and not only that but took money out of his pocket and cared for him and told the the uh, innkeeper he said if there's anything else that he needs you know get it to him and then I when I come back this way he said I'll, I'll pass by this way and I will repay you so look at that compassion how that he the Samaritan went above and beyond all of this like all of the, the confusion, all of the division that had ever transpired between, you know, his people and the Jewish people. And he just had compassion. And this is what Jesus wants us to rise above. All of that. Rise above. We have to rise above culture. Rise above, you know, um, things that may have happened um, in, in our family. Why we don't like this particular family or, or, or whatever. But we have to rise above all that and know that everyone is our neighbor and we have to have compassion on everyone no matter or regardless of who they are um i'm going to open up does anyone have any questions or any thoughts all right well we're gonna uh move on uh, we have some some awesome uh questions here um and we could go to um, our first question, which is question number one. And question number one says, why is Jesus considered the master teacher as this lesson demonstrates? Why is he considered the master teacher? Any thoughts on that? And it's also open up to Facebook if you have a Yes. Did I hear someone? Was there someone else that was the master teacher? Okay. 
Why was he the master teacher? It says here in our book, it says that Jesus answers the lawyer's question with a question of his own. Um, <clears throat> in other words, it kind of seemed like it was more of maybe like a, 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 a put off, like the lawyer was just maybe just trying to, you know, maybe make fun of him um, and how Jesus came back with the question um, to uh, that, you know, the master teacher. Anyone else have any comments? All right, we're gonna move on to question number two. It says, have you seen people pose questions about the Bible, not really for an answer, but to show off their knowledge or to trip up the teacher? What causes this behavior? What causes this behavior? When someone just wants to trip someone up just to show what they know. All right, everyone is quiet tonight. Is anybody here? I'm Lady Ross. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. I think it's a show of disrespect to the mm -hmm. teacher, um, because I was taught, you know, when the teacher has the floor, if you just totally disagree, <coughs> you don't verbally attack the teacher <clears throat> because she has to be respected by the rest of the students. So you can, that's something you can discuss afterwards. I think the lawyer was trying to trip him up, and people do this out of ignorance sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe jealousy. Or, or maybe they think I know as much as the teacher knows. Mm -hmm. So I need to straighten them out, <laughs> you know. Right. So, and there's pride in there. Or mm -hmm. and you just got plain old troublemakers. And so that's my view on that question. All right. All right. Yeah. I, I, you know, thank you, um, Missionary Matt, about, yeah. Uh, it could be disrespect, it could be pride, arrogance, um, um, belief. Um, it could be those things that will cause people to, to want to trip people up. They want to show that, that, that they know more than you do. Um, so sometimes they, they'll do things like that. Yes, I hear another uh, comment. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I heard someone had another comment. Yeah, Lady Rose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sister Velma. Hi, honey. Hi. I was I was uh, listening to your question. You know, I I've been around some people. Well, sometimes they'll talk. They'll try to all talk you, mm -hmm. and you know they think they know it all and stuff like that. And sometimes you just have to hold your peace and let them go ahead and say what they're gonna say. Right. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you just want to say what they're gonna say, and, and okay, move on. Amen. Move like, on, yep. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes people they just like they they want to be they like to be heard. They they like to have an audience. Right. <laughs> you know, someone, okay. <laughs> we, we 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 know someone who's gonna be on TV in in an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> like to have an audience. But we still gotta love them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Missionary Meadows said, "I believe they they're trying to see where you are and how much you know." Yeah, that's right. They 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 want to see where you at, how much you know, how much you don't know. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes they just they just want to see if they can catch you. All right. Um, we're gonna move on to question three. It says, if Jesus were telling this parable today, whom would he use in place of Samaritan? And this was, I, I, I looked at this question uh, last night. This is a good question. Um, in other words, who is most, who is most unlikely person ethnically in our modern day context to stop 
and help someone who is wounded? That's a very interesting question. I kind of had a discussion with uh, my husband last night with that. Who would he use in place of Samaritan today or, or today? If Jesus were telling this story today, instead of him saying Samaritan, you know, back then when I'm sure when he said that word, people were like, oh my God, those people are so bad. They don't practice the same way we do. They don't do the same way. They don't even want to be around us. They, all right. I think Missionary Harris has her hand up if she would like to say something. Uh, yes, I, I, I feel like there's a possibility that, you know, we might even look at a person who's not even saved, a person, it, it, it might even go so far as, as to be someone who doesn't even go to church at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that, that might even be likely to help because see, that's what we're looking for. And that's what the parable was all about, that right. the church people didn't even stop. Even the preachers didn't even stop. Uh, so, you know, you, you know, we certainly would look for the, the saints to stop, but we certainly would look for the, the church people to stop or the people who are saved. But you know what? It, it, even, even people who don't even believe in God, many of them, nice people, nice, very nice people, they just don't believe in the Lord, you know, and, and they just need their, their uh, understanding to be open, uh, but they just don't believe in God, but they're, you know, nice people as such. They, they just, uh, just need to understand uh, that God has a place for them. And so, you know, we, we might expect something like that. Um, you know, somebody that, that, you know, like I said, somebody who knows the Lord, we, we just wouldn't expect a, a, a a crackhead or, or somebody like that, you know, perhaps to stop and help and to do all that. But you look for, you know, we, we, we look for the, the people who have a gentle spirit to stop. And so if he were using modern time, he would probably, you know, go for that type of person, a mob member, gang member, thug or something like that. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you for that. Um, later on. Later no, on. Yes. It's oh, Sister Gloria. Okay. It's Sister Gloria. And then also after Sister Gloria, I think Missionary Mac has something she wants to add. Okay, Sister Gloria. And God bless the saint. You know what? Th th this is a, 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 a loaded question because I started laughing and I said, Lord, in this day and time, the poor man, if the traveler was black, maybe no one would stop. <laughs> in this day and time. <laughs> You know, but uh, we thank the Lord. But you know what? It, it's it's sad to say because I was thinking on the same line as line as Mother Harris that um, it just seems that to me in my life and the things that I've seen, for some reason, the alcoholics, the people who have difficulties drinking, they are probably some of the most um, uh, outgoing, generous people with no fear to stop alone anywhere to help anyone. You know, I was hoping that it would, it would be great to say, and it should be said that those who are saved and sanctified, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, that those would be the people who would stop along this way. But Mother Harris and even the Bible says that even the priest and the Levites didn't do that. So I guess I was saying that the people that would stop along this way in today's society would probably be those who have addictions that would stop and help the wounded. Oh, thank That's you. the Christ thank would you. probably thank you. use. Thank you. Uh, Missionary Matt, thank you. Ma'am, I, I was thinking about the, the, uh, the word ethnicity and mm -hmm. that made me think about race. Like in today's lesson, the Samaritan were a different race. And it brought me back to uh, Mother Kane's testimony that she gave tonight when the tire blew out. And this guy was from a mother of another color, I'm presuming, which would be, you know, light complexion, uh, blue eyed and stuff. But he stopped to help her. And, and they were black. And a lot of times, that happens, and, and we'll, we'll get our, our heads in a nutshell, and 
white people don't do this, black people don't do that, and we'll put them in a certain mold. When, as others have said, when the love of God is in your heart, doesn't matter what color you are, you'll stop and help someone. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes, like I said, we, we look on the outside. Uh, uh, we look at the color of a person and we think, well, they definitely would not help us, you know, in any situation. Um, and then I do, I, I thank God for what I heard from Missionary Harris um, about the unsaved, uh, those that don't even go to church. Uh, Missionary uh, Chambers said those who have uh, are alcoholics or maybe they have a, a addiction, you wouldn't expect them, you know, to help you you may not even expect even a, a, a homeless person right. to help you. But, you know, they may be likely to, to help you. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, we have a variety here um, that, that you know, we, we just can't, uh, I guess, put our, uh, a person who we think is going to help us and, you know, have a picture of who that person will be or whoever I, we think our, our night is shining arm is going to be when we're, we're in help because God will send help to whoever is willing, you know, to help you. Uh, uh, I think about the, the, the story about the, the, there was a flood and the man got, uh, he asked the Lord to help him. And I think someone came by uh, on a boat and he was like, in the, the guy at the boat, he said, he said, I'm, I'm here, I, I can help you. And, and the guy said, well, no, I'm waiting for the Lord to help me. And then um, then it was, he got on the roof and then I think the uh, helicopter came and and the helicopter guy said, I, I'm here to help you. And he said, well, uh, I'm waiting for God to help me. And so we, the floods overtook him, the water overtook him and he went on, on, on to heaven. And he asked God, he said, why didn't he help me? He said, well, I sent you help. You know, to, to, I sent you help. In other words, help, you know, we don't know how it's going to come for us. We don't know, you know, what's going to happen. But know that, you know, like I said, whoever God sends, he sends them to help you. We just don't know how they all go look. I think I saw someone here said on Facebook about entertaining strangers unaware. We, we just don't know. We don't know. Uh, Sister Palmer here was saying, she said, there would be a ton of cell phone videos, but no one helping. And sometimes we're, we're in that situation now. Sometimes we'll see the cell phones going, people. Um, I, I think I, I saw it was an actor a few weeks ago who was just walking down the street and he just got punched. And he's laying out there. No one was there to, to help him. There's, there's a camera going. There's a camera going, but no one you know, went out there, um, maybe eventually someone did, but, you know, before that, everybody's, you know, just, you know, just walking around, not, you know, paying attention. And that is so, you know, it's so sad that we live in a society like that, you know, that, you know, no one wants, wants to help, but we don't want to be like that. We don't want to be like, said the priest, we don't want to be like that, that Levite, you know, be so religious that we can't touch people. Um, and, and, and I think that's so sad that we don't have compassion. We have relig we're so religious, but we don't have compassion for one another. All right. Um, any more comments on that question? I know I've talked a lot on, on that question. We, um, if not, we're going to move on. We move on to question number four. It says, have you ever helped someone of a different ethnicity? Uh, how many times have you been in a situation in which someone of another group stopped to help you? And we thank God for Mother, Mother Kane shared her story um, about that. Has anyone ever helped you of another race or ethnicity? Yeah, this is Sister Turner. I have a comment. Okay, yes, Sister Turner. Yes, I, I was, um, I experienced that when I lived in Wisconsin and I had a doctor's appointment and I was driving and it was bad, real bad outside. And I had, it was important that I be there that I had a procedure done. And when I went to, I got almost to the doctor's office, maybe about well, 10 miles is a short period in, in, in a short distance in, in, in the city, but in my, my car went airborne and something happened to me and it started losing power and it stopped and I was able to get it on the shoulder. And then there happened to be a part of like a, 
a garage and the way so parked and stuff. And I went back and said, I need help. I got an appointment. I can't cancel. I got to get to to the surgery center. And this 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 older gentleman on the other persuasion was sitting there, and he was listening to my story. And I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and I didn't have any relatives there. So anyway, he this this gentleman that was sitting there said. He was drinking his coffee, and all of a sudden he said something, told him to come to that parking place and that garage. And he said, well, where do you have to go? And I told him, I said, it's the surgery center. It's about 10 miles out. But I didn't know that man, and I was already had a cast, I mean, a body brace on and everything. And he said, well, I'll take you there. I said, but my car said, he said, don't worry about the car. It'll be okay. So he took, he drove that guy. He was, when he got in the car, he said it was a German, and that scared me. <laughs> I said, I don't know this man, and I don't know where he's taking me. But anyway, he dropped me off at the surgery center. He gave me his card, and he told me that when I got done, to call him. And I oh. thought, this something is wrong with this situation. Because, you know, I was skeptical because I, I was out in the country, nowhere. I had nowhere, I didn't know anybody. And when I looked at his card, and I looked at it, and I said, that's the name of one of these real large uh car dealerships. I said, I wonder how he got that car. Still didn't dawn on me who he was. When I and he when he came to pick and he I called him and said I was ready. He mm-hmm. drove my car back to me. Ooh. And then he he stopped at, at the park place and he said who he was. He owned one of the largest car dealerships in Milwaukee. Oh, and wow. he said that God told him and he said to help somebody. And he said, Do you need me to follow you home? I said, I, I'll be okay. But I was like I mean, I trusted him, but I didn't. But then he, he felt like he was okay. And that meant it took me three hours to come from that surgery place, and he waited on me at that place until I got out. Yeah. Man, thank you, Sister Turner. What a wonderful story. Um, okay. You know, like I said, you, did, you didn't know him, and he didn't know you. No, I never. I was scared to get in the car because, you know, I'm a woman, and he was an older guy, and I was scared to get in the car, but I had to go, and I was, I was in pain, so I said, I'm just going to have to get in here and trust God because, you know, I had to go, and I just could not believe after I even got home that it really well, I thought maybe it was a dream, you know, that he waited that long. He drove me, like, it was about 10 to 15 miles, and I was on time. I wasn't late. Because the anesthesiologists and everybody were waiting on me, and I could not believe it that. And then when I looked at that car, mm-hmm. I thought, well, maybe he just worked for him. And the guy was the owner mm-hmm. of that place. Yes. And he wouldn't take any money. He did, And I don't know what he paid to get whatever was wrong with something. A cable came loose or something had to be put or replaced. And he said, you, and he told me, you need to get your brakes checked. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. And I said, what? He said, just go home, and I'll follow you if you need to. And that's all. I don't know if he paid for it or what, whatever. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's what awesome! So what a what a awesome God that we serve. You know, here here where you had you had a curb all the way up curbside service, and and, and he drove your car back. You know, just yeah, you know, just my, he came in my own car to pick me up. So they looked, they checked it out before he made sure it was safe because he said he wanted to drive it and make sure it was safe for me to go home because I had about fifteen miles to go home after I left the surgery center. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, um, Sister Turner. Um, I see that Missionary um, Harris has her hand up. Um, I guess she would like to share with us. Yes, I, I just, you know, I'm looking at the question here. First part says, have you ever helped someone of a different ethnicity? And then how many times have you been in a situation where someone of another group helped you? Obviously, that's two deep questions. And, you know, it's hard for me to believe that you know anybody who who loves the Lord or has anybody any kind of moral compass at all, uh, you know, can even count the times that they've helped someone of a different uh, ethnic, ethnic, ethnicity. And I don't say it to brag; it's just a fact. I don't know how many times I have. You know, it's it's just it's just easy to do. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you may not have a whole lot of money to give. It may not be something terribly extreme. But uh, I, I believe that, you know, in, in our own way with whatever we have, I believe we've been willing to, I, I certainly have. And like I said, I can't imagine anybody with the love of God who would not be moved to that, um, to that extent. And, and listening to Sister Turner's a story, Mother Kane's story, just reminds us, you know, I, I think that several of us can say that, you know, God has given us favor with people like that. And I, I believe that. And that's why I can't say 
that all of them, I can't lump them all together. You know what I mean? And I, it would be very wrong and unfair to do that because I believe that God has people everywhere and of all ethnicities and all of that. So yeah, how many times have we been in a situation? I, I uh, thought about this when we were on the last question about uh, who would Jesus choose today, but I thought about a situation that I was in years ago when I was uh, going to IUSB and, and we were down to one car and my husband had that one car going to work in Elkhart. So I was taking the bus to IUSB uh, to mm -hmm. school. And so this particular day, it was snowing so hard. It was so frigid and cold. In the first place, I had to walk four blocks to get to the bus stop. And, oh. but I'm standing there at the bus stop, you know, you gotta get there early just in case to catch the bus. And I, I was already cold and frigid before I even got to the bus stop. And as I was standing there waiting on the bus, and I mean, it was, it was coming down hard. It was raining, snow mixed together. It was just a terrible, terrible day. And you know what? One of the saints, as a matter of fact, he was a pastor. He passed by and he saw me and he blew toot toot and he rolled on past. And I said, oh, and I waved, you know, and I'm standing there shivering and waved. And you know what? In just a few minutes, another saint passed and she saw me and she blew too. She blew and waved and kept riding. And I thought, oh, you know, of course I was waiting for the bus and maybe they assume since I'm at the bus stop, maybe I, you know. <laughs> Maybe I ought to just wait on the bus. But in any case, I'm thinking, boy, it would be nice. As cold and, and bad as it is out here, you know, maybe you just take me on a few blocks on, you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, both of them, they saw me, they just honked and waved and went on, you know. Uh, it just kind of reminded me of this story uh, because maybe if it was a nice sunny day, and that might be a nice day to just wait. But I, I, I think I believe that I would have been moved uh, seeing somebody I know standing out there in, in those kind of elements, but sometimes, you know, and I, I just, I, I reasoned it in my mind, I reasoned it. Maybe they were just in a real big hurry and just couldn't stop or whatever. You know, I didn't, you know, didn't try to judge their situation because I don't know what their situation was. You know, it could be that they were running late and had to get where they were. Um, but in any case, the way that I was feeling, I certainly could understand you know, being in a situation where you need help and there's people that you would expect it to come from and they just they just move on. So uh, how many times have we been there? We've probably all been there, uh, yeah. you know, from time to time. I'm sure we've all been there. But one thing you have to understand is that sometimes we, we're hurt because we look for the help to come uh, a certain way. Sister Ross brought that out in that in that illustration she just, she just made. Sometimes we do look for help to come in a certain way, but God can send help from a, a, you know a thousand different ways. There's no telling you know how the help could come, and so all we have to do is just be open for the help and know that God will send help and He will favor us uh, somehow. Yes, thank you, Mister Harris. Thank you for those wonderful re remarks. Um, and like you said, it was probably, like I said, we've all been helped um, in some way or another. We've all given help in, in one way or another. I um, also thank God for our pastor joining us. And um, um, he was uh, teaching uh, the youth class on tonight. So I thank God that he was able to join us uh, for these last few minutes. Um, Missionary Shameless, uh, I see that your hand is up. And you would like yeah, to add I, something? Yes, ma'am. God bless the incoming of our pastor. Um, yes. What is, it's the question on that question about helping someone else. Um, what is considered help, uh, would be considered help? Opening the door for someone of a different color, opening the door for the elderly. Would that be considered help or do we categorize help because um, of the greater things such as the awesome testimony that Mother Kane and uh, Sister Turner gave when these people extended themselves beyond the call of duty, you know, and there were, perhaps could have been some money exchanged. So is the part of help of the little simple things, is that yet considered um, given an answer to the question? All right, very good question, um, Missionary Chambliss. Um, she says, what is considered help? Is it the the, the simple things, um, as she mentioned, opening a door? Um, I, that's a very good question. I, I'd love to hear some comments on that. Uh, we thank God for those that have 
uh, joined us on Facebook. We had some who have joined us lately. But uh, if everyone heard that question, what is considered help? Mr. Turner, this is Sister Turner again. I can come, I have to, uh, give my second appearance. Um, that's a good question because one time I was at the bus stop and um, this young lady was standing there and we had missed the bus so we had to wait a little while. And she just looked like she was just troubled about something. And I said, and I just spoke to her. And I said, how are you doing today? She said, not good. And I said, oh, I said, today, I said, it's cold, but it'll be a better day. And then she started telling me that uh, she was having some family problems and Nobody was talking to her, and she just kept talking to me, and she kept saying that she was going to school. She just kept talking to me because the bus came. Then when I got on the bus, and she said, thank you for talking to me because nobody had said anything to me today. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay. You know, and I thought that was that, that was kind of, you know, I said, that's, I, and that made me think. I said, now that was, I didn't even know the lady. I didn't even yet know the young lady's name. And I just, just was standing there talking, you know, to her. And, she, and for her to just look at me and say that, I thought, wow, to myself. Now, that is important to say, just tell hello to somebody or how you feel it. And you just don't know how that impacts somebody's day, like like Missionary Chain was said. Now, that's not a great thing. It, 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 it was great to her, but it was just something ordinary. If I'm standing there and when there's two people, I usually kind of strike up a conversation, you know, with them past the time or just, just to talk. So it is, I don't think it's. It just depends on what the impact of the person that's in re- that's receiving the, the the gesture. You know, I think that has something to do with it. it. Could be great or it could be small, but it has the same impact no matter uh, who re- the person that's receiving and how they look at it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it Church. just looked like she was just troubled about something, and I said, and I just spoke to her. I said, "How are you?" Oh. Thank you for talking to me because nobody should get anything to me today. Mm-hmm. Right. And, 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 and it's something I believe. You know, Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think, Sister Turner, I think you were cutting off. Talking about um, something and I said, mm-hmm. and I just spoke to her. I said, are you? Mm. Yeah. And it, and that's the way I believe that's how the Holy Ghost will work with you. Um, when you, you feel that compassion, the Holy Ghost yeah. will allow you to feel um, the need uh, that someone, whoever it is, like I said, black, white, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter, but the Holy Ghost will, 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 you know, uh, guide you and lead you, you know, to help a person. Um, I was here on Facebook is, uh, sister Denise Hoskins says you may be opening the door for someone that can't open it there. So yes, that's help. So, you know, maybe, you know, they have a disability or maybe they just got their arms full with a lot of packages or, or groceries. Um, and need some help. Um, so there's, um, so that's another way of, of helping. We have anyone else that'd like to comment on uh, Missionary Chambers questions. What is considered help? I would uh, quickly, this is Sister Mack. Uh, I think you mentioned opening the door and I was sitting here thinking, as you get older, those doors get heavier. And so you really appreciate someone opening the door or even just helping you in your coat. Mm-hmm. I got- Short, fat arms, you know, and and sometimes <laughs> I'm struggling trying to get in my coat, and, and and the brothers used to pass by and whatever, but they help now. We had a lesson on that one time, and it, it's really a help. But the one thing I want to quickly say is I was in the grocery store, and I don't know what happened, but I was ready to pay for my food, and I gave her my my debit card, and it wouldn't go through, and I knew the money was there. And we tried again. I got so confused. I was like, oh, God, what is happening? A lady walked up, and I called her an angel. And she told the clerk here, and she handed the lady her debit card. She came from the back of the line and paid for my groceries. And so I had to pack the groceries myself, and I thought, well, I'm going to wait for her to come out so I can properly thank her. I never did see her come out, but she probably was maybe just shopping. But... That really helped me because she showed compassion to me in my time of need. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thank you. This wonderful story. Um, anyone else uh, have uh, any comment? Um, this is Mother Kane. I just wanted to uh, add this. Sometimes we are helping just because who we are, and sometimes we don't even realize we're helping. And 
And the reason I say that, I had a gentleman of um, another color uh, just a few weeks ago that came up to me and he said, you don't remember me, do you? And I looked at his face and I said, no. He says, I just want you to know that I was really acting up and cutting up uh, when I was in here a couple of weeks ago. And I want you to know that your you calmed me down. And I don't remember what I, I didn't remember nothing about this gentleman. He said, but you, and he, he had came back in and he had completed his transaction on the inside. And then I was um, getting ready to uh, go and help another customer. He said, can you wait? Can you come here for a minute? And so he took time and he said to me, you calmed me down. And I said, oh, I did? <laughs> he said, he said, yeah. He says, I was just really upset about when he went on, say, you know, A, B, C, D. And he said, I have to apologize to you. He says, because I'm suffer, I suffer from uh, PTSD. He yeah. says, and he, he says, I, I, uh, I see a therapist, but sometimes when things happen to me or things happen, I get all out of sorts and I get anxiety and, 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 and I, I don't listen or I don't hear. He said, but I just want you to know you really helped me that day. And uh, I was just, I was just thrown back because I, I, well, you know, I, I see a number of people in a given day that I do work, but I, I just didn't even remember, but he, he took time when he came back, he said, I just need to tell you this. And I thought, and I told him, I said, well, that was so kind that you took time to mm -hmm. uh, let me know that. And I said, you just take care of yourself and be safe. And he went on his way. So when we say about this help, sometimes we are demonstrating that help, that care, that concern, that compassion. I think Mother Pam Harris said earlier that when we are people of God, that concern or that, uh, you know, that spirit that, that God has given us will um, allow us to speak or to hear or to listen uh, and that brings on uh, a matter of a help also maybe that's why I'm over the helps ministry huh pastor <laughs> right all right yeah. 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 that's right that's right some 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 people haven't quite got there yet but we think <laughs> Okay, have that spirit of help. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> All right. right. I'm going to, that's wonderful uh, comments from uh, Mother Kane. Um, I'm going to give that question back to uh, Missionary Chamberlain. Amen. I appreciate. And you know what? While everyone was speaking, the definition of help to do something that makes it easier for someone to do a job, to deal with a problem, et cetera, to aid or assist someone to make something less severe, to make something more pleasant or easier to deal with, to give yourself or another person. And I just thank and praise the Lord because a lot of times, if we're not careful, we uh, hesitate more to help because it's nothing big. You know, and when Mother Kane was speaking, that was a help, you know, where she helped this man perhaps uh, not not go to jail or when we say kind things. So I, I just thank and praise the Lord, you know, that, that we have to make, you know, come to a conclusion that grand is when we do something, no matter how small or great, when we do it out of the goodness of the Lord, do it out of the goodness of our heart. Cause the Bible says, let our light so shine that men would see our good works and that God would be glorified. So opening that door for the elderly, or for the week or for whatever, you know, so I just thank you, praise the Lord, that the help is not always in big packages, but uh, it's small ones too, as long as God gets the glory. Thank you for that space. And thank you, Mr. Chambliss. Um, looks like we are out of uh, time on tonight. Um, <clears throat> for our pastor uh, that has come in, I don't know if people would like to add anything to what has. I've enjoyed everything yeah. I've heard. I, I appreciate 
uh, when it came to help, we see such a, a, a the Samaritan, a good Samaritan, offered a large amount of help. Even after uh, he left, he offered a large amount of help and it would make it up the difference if, when he came back in town. But there are small amounts of help as well, uh, means just as much uh, to that person. Uh, you know what? Uh, even as much as a smile, yeah. or hello or god bless you brightens up people day right. uh to the fact of when you tell people we used to when we were uh before the COVID, and we were in service we would give one another a great big hug right. and let them know that you know you love them uh and 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 that may be the only hug mm -hmm. or love gesture that people get and it means it helps their spirit it helps their emotions and so it means a lot whether little or whether large uh from a smile to a hundred dollar bill what have you it, it it is big and i thank first lady for uh doing the sunday school this week last week we had to flip and flop right. uh being able to be with our young people and be able to talk to them about the love of god be able to talk to them about uh the future Mm -hmm. uh, the future with the Lord in their future. And we thank God for them. Thank God for the Grail Temple Youth Department as well. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. God for all, all the people that's on Zoom. That's my Zoom people. <laughs> there are a lot of you on Zoom tonight. Yes. Wow. There's quite a few. There's quite a few tonight. <laughs> thank God for those that are on Facebook. Yes. We love you all. We really appreciate it. Amen. We're looking forward to uh, this Sunday. Uh, Lord say the same, it'll be our pink Sunday. I want everybody to come out dressed in pink and we're gonna celebrate our cancer survivor. We're gonna honor uh, those that have passed on from cancer, passed away from cancer. We're gonna have uh, two victorious testimonies, gonna have the word of God, gonna have a special guest to come in, talk to us from the River Bend Cancer Society. Amen, we're gonna be practicing social distancing and, and everything. Uh, and keeping everyone safe. Uh, so come out and be with us on Pink Sunday. Remember, this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. I'm talking to all, amen, uh, uh, members of be nice to your pastor, <laughs> be wonderful to your pastor, your pastor's wife. Uh, amen. It's just a blessing. This whole month is the Pastor Appreciation. I thank God for uh, Greater Holy amen. Temple. Amen. Amen. Uh, sharing their love with, with us as well. Thank you so very much. Uh, but amen. If you don't belong to Great Old Temple, you belong somewhere, be nice to your pastor. Give them a call, give them a text, tell them you love them, you're encouraged by them. Amen. Uplift their spirits uh, in the Lord. This is tough times. This is perilous times. It's also tough times. We've never been through this before. And everybody think, well, a pastor, you know, he, he can do this and he can do that. He can open up his shirt and have a Superman cape on, but he needs encouragement. And she needs encouragement. <laughs> I don't have that cape on. <laughs> amen. But need encouragement. You need encouragement. Uh, I also want to, amen, say to you, amen. Uh, if you haven't gotten your book, 52 plus one, now's a great time to get your book. What an awesome devotional book. It's a powerful devotional book from the word of God to you. You can get it on Amazon. Amen. I should have said something for Amazon Prime, but that's over. All you can right. get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it on Barnes & Noble. You can get it on Christian uh, Faith Publishing Company. Because uh, I think I was on Amazon. They said it had a few copies left. But Christian Faith Publishing has it as well. Mm -hmm. We have it at Greater Holy Temple. I've been getting great information back on the reading. Uh, thank all those that have bought books uh, from me. Amen. Bless them. I give God all the glory for allowing me to uh, write this book. Amen. To encourage your hearts. Amen. Also make a great Christmas gift. God bless yeah. you. Uh, I was talking to the young people. There are several young people that want to be authors of Praise books. God. Amen. I thank God for that. Thank God yes. for that. Amen. So I love you all. Thank you all so much. I'll be back in the hands of First Lady. <laughs> Amen. What a wonderful job. Thank Amen. you, First Lady. Amen. Uh, someone did ask a question about this Sunday being Pink Sunday. Wear something pink or something close to pink. Don't let that stop you from not coming. If you don't have pink, 
Um, you want to put a put a pink ribbon on or, or whatever, but just wear something pink. Sure. Um, at this time, I do see Deacon McGee on the line um, for our ministry of giving. And after Deacon McGee, we're going to be in the hands of uh, Mother Jean Kane. She has an announcement. Uh, so Deacon McGee, stay with us. Stay with stay us. with us. Just, and, just a few more. Deacon McGee, I have the app, and that app works smooth. <laughs> I use my app. <laughs> Uh, to yeah. give quite, I used to do it online at mygstchurch.com, but I got the app on my phone and yes. it is smooth. I love it. I love yeah. the Great Old Temple app. Yes, it, it does. Okay. It, it takes about, oh, I, I gave oh, today, I, it took me about two seconds yeah. to, to seconds do the give. Once right, you get just, that app up, just yeah. boom, boom, because it, it's good. Deacon uh, McGee, I'm sorry, but it's a great app, Deacon. Deacon I'm getting there. My wife actually sent me the link. The other day, just yesterday, <laughs> she heard she heard about my antics the other day, so she said, "I better get him the app." <laughs> so we certainly want to say uh, we thank God for uh, our lesson on tonight, and uh, God's been good to us. Um, I will say that uh, it's already been said as far as the app. So get that app, and we certainly want everybody to give on tonight. It's our pastoral ministry. And uh, what better way to show you appreciate your pastor, amen, uh, than to give, amen, uh, yeah. the, do, the best, do the best that you can. And uh, we know what we're asked for as far as uh, uh, our Greater Holy Temple members. Uh, we just hope that uh, all of our friends and family from all over Facebook and uh, anywhere else, just dial it in. Uh, you certainly able to give uh, and uh, we will appreciate that. Um, I'll uh, say a prayer and bless the offering at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for uh, this day, this moment in time. We ask that you continue to be with us as we go forward. Father, we ask that you bless the offering that we are about to receive on today. Bless those that have, even bless those that have not, that they may have on the next time. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Uh, back into the hands of the giver. Thank you. Amen. Uh, Missionary Jean Kang. Uh, hello. Uh, I thank the Lord for the lesson on tonight and for a pastor and priest lady. It's already been mentioned that October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we want to invite everyone to be with us on October the 25th at 2 p.m. Yeah. for our pastor and first lady six year anniversary. Uh, to come and be with us. I guess speaker for that day is uh, Elder Stephen Anderson. And we just asking everyone to come and be a support and be a blessing to our pastor, show your appreciation. Immediately after service, we will have the love shower there. And then um, you may have, well, you should have received the trifle uh, mentioning the quotas and everything. So it's already been mentioned how you can give if you're not able to be there. But we just ask you to come and be a blessing to our pastor yes. on October 25th at 2 p.m. Oh, and our colors are red, black, and white. So, but don't let that stop you from coming if you don't have those colors, but the, those are the color choices. So we just ask you to keep that in mind and come and be a blessing to our pastor. Amen. Amen. Hey, Amen. This, this is Deacon McGee again. I don't know. It may have been said. I'm not sure, but... Uh, Continue to pray for uh, Brother Richard Sutherland. Uh, he's in the hospital over there in Michigan City. I literally just got off the phone with him while we were on the Zoom. He, he's feeling well and seems to be doing fine. He, you know, he was his old self somewhat. So we laughed a little bit. And then I told him I had to get back on the Zoom call. But continue to pray for uh, Brother Richard Amen. Sutherland. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon McGee. Amen. I would like to, uh, this is Eileen. Um, I wanted to pray for my granddaughter. She goes to school in university, in university of Michigan and she had to come home last weekend. Her roommate had a date with a guy and I don't know if he had the virus or, mm -hmm. or as it happened now. So she had to come home and she has asthma. So keep her in your prayers. Her name is Elon Williams. Yes, we will Thank do that. You. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Amen. It's just, yeah, we know there's just so many people that we know that have just been touched, you know, by this coronavirus. And yes, we are 
praying for those. We'll also continue to pray for Mother Stone and Deacon Stone uh, as well. Um, all right, well, at this time, we're going to be in the hands of our pastor. Okay. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, First Lady. Thank God for your announcement. We just love you, appreciate you. Amen. Appreciate our greater Holy Temple family. Yes. Amen. Thank God for those that's on Facebook all the way from Texas and, and all over. God bless you. We thank God for you. We're praying for one another. Those that were mentioned, let us pray for them. Amen. Amen. Pray for our bereaved Amen. family as well. Father God, in the name Amen, of Jesus, Jesus, we thank you Amen. tonight for love, mercy, and kindness. We thank you for this lesson uh, to love our neighbors. Lord, to extend that love one to another. We may not even know them in the grocery store, but to still love them, yes. to still be able to help them, to lend a hand. Lord, we ask you to bless us, to exemplify the love of Jesus everywhere we go, whether on the job, whether in the school, whether on the Zoom call or the Facebook, let us exemplify the love that yes, you Lord. are uh, shared with us, forgiven our sins, and we thank you. You shed your blood on Calvary just for us. And we yes, thank Lord. you, oh God, for the love you've shown us, that agape love. Lord, we ask that you bless our church family, uh, bless the pastors and pastors' wives and all the leaders, yes, Lord. Lord, that you would bless them in a great way. Lord, we ask that you go into hospital rooms and that you would touch right now those Jesus. that's in the hospital. Bless and touch brother richard Sutherland. yes touch lord, him oh lord in the name of jesus you are the healer you can yes, lift lord. him up from wherever he is bless mother stone and deacon stone down in indianapolis lord, yes, lord. touch him lord touch from lord. the top of their head to the soles of their feet we lord are praying for them we're standing in the gap for them we're yes, intercessor lord. prayer yes, for lord. them jesus. oh god and lord we believe oh, you yes. faith yes, that you are healing that you can do this lord Bless, oh God, our bereaved family. Continue to bless our brother Derek Chambers and his family, oh yes, God. Lord. Continue to touch others that have lost loved ones. Lord, continue to lift them up, comfort them, and yes, give them Lord. strength, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, bless us. We know we're getting ready to leave the Zoom call. We're getting ready to leave Facebook. But, oh God, be with us yes, everywhere Lord. we go, Lord. Be with us. Protect us, lead us, and guide us. And, Lord, we thank you. We give you all glory. <laughs> And we give you all the praise yes, and we Lord. magnify you on today and we lift you up, oh God. Lord, bless us to have a great night's sleep. And when yes, we Lord. wake up, Lord, it be your will, be refreshed. And we'll have new mercies to new go mercies. throughout the day to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. We put our hands thank together Jesus. and we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Yes, thank Lord. you for your mercies. For your In mercy. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God amen. bless, God bless, bless you. the Lord. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.